The capital was buffeted with severe weather warnings this week, but the only real storm came from inside the chambers of the Florida House and Senate. This is week five of the Florida legislative session. The charter school bill passed out of appropriations and is on its way to the floor. Remember, HB 5105 would provide $200 million to for-profit charter school companies that open schools targeting high-needs communities. This is above the normal per-pupil expenditure and would fund professional development, incentives for community support programs, and pay teachers for extended days and extra tutoring. These are the very same strategies FEA has advocated for traditional public schools serving disadvantaged communities. What is the most important thing for our members to know about the Schools of Hope bill, which is the charter school bill? Some of the most important things to know about that bill is that there's not one thing in it that is helpful to students. It's all about giving corporations a high dollar and making our kids for sale and for profit. There's not anything in that, in that bill that will provide anything uh, new and different for our students. What did you get out of it when you read the bill? Yeah, when I looked at the Schools of Hope bill, or as I like to call it, the Schools of Hype bill, one of the things that jumped out to me is, is the long game. It's not just about the immediate impacts, as bad as they are, but 5, 10, 15 years down the road, this is really leading towards the path to privatization. The charter school operators have every reason to be hopeful um, because if this bill were to pass, they would make money hand over fist, absolutely. On the opposite side of the Capitol, the Senate heard and amended their testing bill, SB 926, which offers a ray of hope for our students. However, with its fate now depending on members of the House, it doesn't seem to have a very good chance of survival. We hope that members of the House see the possibilities of improving our students' learning environments with the changes SB 926 proposes and passes into law. Among other things, the amended version of this bill eliminates four end-of-course assessments, allows for testing with paper and pencil, and it makes VAM optional. In other news, the House passed its version of the annual contract bill, and the Senate version is making its way up the ladder. These bills invalidate the work of more than half of Florida's 67 school districts to keep their high-quality teachers, and it preempts a district's ability to establish meaningful policies going forward. We know that continuity is good for our students, and what our members want is stability. But what we all want is a high-quality teacher in every public school. And our union and some districts have worked really hard to ensure that if you are effective or highly effective, you remain in the classroom. The annual contract bill seeks to uproot everything that we've done in the last couple of years to ensure stability in our public schools, in our classrooms, and with our instructors. Florida has a teacher retention and recruitment problem. Passage of this bill will lead to more high quality teachers leaving their schools, their districts, and the profession. In order to retain the most effective teachers, more than half of local school boards and superintendents in the state have established policies to rehire their effective or highly effective teachers for the next school year, provided they have no disciplinary actions. Only the superintendents and school boards who want to adopt such a policy have done so. Being an annual contract teacher, it's affected me a lot simply because to know that at the end of the year, I'm, my job security is not there. We work outside of just the, the school hours from 8.35 to 3.05. We go beyond the call of duty. It saddens me and I know it saddens a lot of the annual contractors because we are very, very passionate about what we do. The common goal is to have a quality education for each student no matter their social economic background. Retaining good teachers to create and maintain a stable school environment for our students should be a top priority in our public schools. As always, members made their way up to the Capitol to help advocate for our students. To the members, I just want to say that, uh, you know, your money is well spent because um, what they do is, uh, is incredible. Uh, fighting for us, fighting for our, our, our rights is our voice and uh, it's very needed. Legislators are so out of touch with what's going on actually in not only in the communities within the, within the school districts, it's very important for the people in the trenches and the people in the field to come up here and communicate their needs and their wants and their desires with the legislature. House session yesterday, it was like a lot of kindergartners um, just roaming around, not paying attention, and then all of a sudden shouting no when the vote came up. I'm not giving up because this is important to me and to my students. Let them know what's important to you and the teachers back home. Uh, so they keep that in mind and they keep reminding them what they need to need to focus on. And if you can't come, 
you should be writing letters, making phone calls, sending messages to let them know what you need for your school and your students and your life. Whether you're in Tallahassee lobbying legislators in their offices or taking action from your cell phone, it's crucial that lawmakers hear from you. That's all for now. We'll be back next week. Stay tuned.